Okay, so today what we're gonna do, we're gonna show you how to open a school in Texas. All 50 states are different when opening a school. Why? Because every state board has their own specific rules and regulations. What that means, if you're in Florida, New York, Texas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Michigan, California, no matter what state you're in, Guam, Alaska, Hawaii, every state has their own state board with their rules and regulations. Now, with NACUS, the accrediting commission, and the DOE, Department of Education, which issues the financial aid and the, the grants and student loans, subsidized and unsubsidized, those are on the federal level. So the rules and regulations are the exact same in every state for that. But when opening your school, the first thing you want to do is Google your rules and regulations. And you can Google your state board. The state board will have those rules and regulations on their website. Some websites are a little bit more tedious to navigate. So if you Google your local state board and you can't find the state board rules and regulations, send an email. Just email millionairebarber at gmail.com and one of my team members will email you those rules and regulations. It's that simple, okay? So now, once you do that, step one, Google State Board Rules and Regulations. That's the first step. And then after you Google those rules and regulations, you're gonna realize that those rules are not difficult at all. A lot of people have planted the seed in your head that you gotta have all this square footage, all these chairs, because we've been tricked by looking at all of these um, big schools, like the Palm Mitchells, the Vedas, the Empires, that you got to open up this big old huge school. No, you don't have to do that. You can open up a small school, a small school like I did back in 1998. I had a small hole in the wall school. Everybody laughed. I looked at my rules and regulations for my state. It told me the minimum square footage, the minimum chairs, the minimum stations, what I needed, how many restrooms. It was not a lot. You all would be surprised if you look at your state board rules and regulations. There are a lot of barber shops, beauty shops, nail shops out here that are the size of a school. Some people could turn their shop into a school right now. Why would you turn your shop into a school? Because one has the potential to bring you financial freedom and time freedom. One has the potential to keep you behind the chair the rest of your life working hard. Now think about it. It's not all about the money, but think about the time and freedom that you will be able to have. Think about the generational wealth that you will be able to create. Think about passing a school down. Think about this. You passing a school down for generations instead of a shot. It's a big difference. So now these rules and regulations, and think about it. If you open up a school right now, if Al, George, Courtney, Jessica, Karen, Pierre, Regina, Tabella, if all y'all opened up a school right now, and I opened up a shop. Three years from now, you all could be accredited, receiving government money, government grants, federal funds, they call it Title IV funding, Pell grants, subsidized loans, unsubsidized loans. You could be generating anywhere from 20 to 25,000 a student. I opened a shop, I'm not doing no school. Guess who I'm gonna be? In the shop. Five years from now, you all will still be getting financial aid, probably a million or more by that time. Me, I'll still be in the shop. See, a lot of times, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and probably $20 million later, you all still had this school. 20 years later, I'm in my shop broke, living from paycheck to paycheck, body broke down. So there's a big difference in owning a school versus owning a shop. A shop, there's no way out. 
you're like a hamster on a wheel, a person on a treadmill, a never ending treadmill. Think about that. One can give you financial freedom, time freedom, and physical freedom. Your body will not be hurting. If you work 20 years behind that chair, 10 years, whatever, sooner or later, your body is going to start breaking down. Now, there are a lot of people out there that say, well, ain't nothing wrong with my body. No, that's not true. How are you going to work that long and not have any issues? Think about it. I sit in front of a computer, and, and I've done that for probably seven years, and hey, your elbow or, or whatever start hurting. I mean, sometimes I start hurting. I'm just sitting down, and I just have to get up. Sometimes I just work on my computer standing up. You, you just can't keep doing something repetitively and not start having any physical ailments. So I encourage you all, you may want to open a school. A school is not for everyone. No, it's not. It doesn't have to be your passion. It, it doesn't. A lot of people open schools for different reasons. It, you may open it because it's your passion. You're tired of students graduating from these schools and you have to retrain them. You may open it because you're tired of trying to collect boofriend or whatever and dealing with these grown people acting like kids. You may be tired of your clients. Your body may start to, you may start feeling your body breaking down. You may want to make more money. You may want more time freedom, financial freedom. There are a lot of reasons why. I mean, what are some of the reasons why you all want to open a school? I mean, put in the chat box why y'all want to open a school because everybody's different. Everybody on here is totally different on why you want to open a school. And there's no right or wrong reason on why you want to open a school. If you want to open it just for the money, that's okay. You know, a lot of people say, well, they're just doing it for the money. So what? Everybody has their own option or reason why they want to do something. And just because you don't want to do it, that doesn't mean anything. Absolutely. All right, so y'all, I had to stop the Zoom because my mom going to go to church. So um, I wish you all, and this is the number one reason why y'all should want to open a school so you can retire your mother, be able to take care of her, have more time freedom and financial freedom. So that's why I stopped this Zoom. So I love you love and you uh, have a good day. All right, y'all have a good day. All have right, now um, we'll get back. So um, everybody has different reasons why you want to open a school. And she was coming down the stairs ready to go to church, so she stopped in here. That's my number one reason for wanting to open a school. Um, everybody knows that. Okay. Karen said, have a legacy, time freedom. Pierre, it was my next step as an instructor. Courtney, I know I'm destined to open a school. I'm here to get the discipline and processes. Karen, you too. Okay, uh, chemistry. We've heard so much about her. She's your wife. That's right. She's my wife. Um, everybody is different on why you want to open a school. So we'll move on. And it's not hard to open a school. It's not hard. Al Sullivan, he said he wants financial freedom for my children and to help others. We all have different reasons, but I'm going to tell you something. When you open that school and once you reach accreditation level and you're getting all of that government money, all the stuff that you all are talking about is going to become automatic. See, some things when you do, they become automatic, whether you want it or not. It's, think about this. I just joined this group a while back. And in joining that group, I've been following a meal plan and I had to drink. 
this gallon of water every day. And I have to eat certain meals. There's no sugar and all that. Whether I want to get in better shape, better health, have better, more bowel movements or whatever, it's automatic. That, that's automatic. You can't work out every day, eat right, drink your half a gallon of water, a gallon of water, and not get healthier. You can say, well, I don't want to get healthy. I don't want to lose weight. I don't want to get in better shape. But if you're working out every day, eating correctly, drinking your water and all of that, you're going to get in better health, regardless if you pray or whatever. Some things are a result of what you do. So even if you open this school, you follow everything, you work hard, put your time in, you get accredited, and you say, well, I don't want to make more money. I don't want more time of freedom. It's going to be automatic that that's going to happen. I don't want to get more instructors. Well, if you follow the thing, you're going to have to get more instructors. So I want you all to understand that. Now, when you open the school, because I'm not here to sell y'all a dream um, and all of that, it's going to take some time it, it, and it's going to take some work. If, if you're not willing to work, then the school is not for you. Is it going to be easy? No. I never said it was going to be easy. No, it's, it's not going to be easy. Are you going to have some testing times? Yes. Are you going to have some challenges? Yes. Are you going to have some roadblocks? Yes. All through the course, you're going to have some roadblocks. It's not no straight shot. No, it's not. Now, with the program, is it going to help you and show you how to maneuver along the way and get there faster, quicker, easier? Yes, it is. So I'm not here to tell you, oh, open the school and you're going to make a million dollars. No. Mm -mm. Get that out of your head. Now, if you open the school, you do everything you're supposed to do, you work hard, follow everything. The second year, you get the VA money, vocational rehabilitation. Then the third, the second year also, you get the military money. Yeah. And then the third year, you get accredited. Your life is going to be better, but it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. So now we got the state board application up here. We've already looked at the rules and regulations because every state board rules and regulations are different. If you read your rules and regulations, you're going to see that it, all you have to do is just follow those rules and regulations. And the thing about it, if something's not correct, the state board is going to tell you. They're going to tell you, you need to go back and change this. You need to do this. That, that's the thing about it. They're going to tell you. So we're doing Texas today. Now, looking at Texas, rules and regulations, we read those. All right, application. This application is very simple. Very simple. Name of school, school applications, license type. I mean, what are you doing? Barber school, cosmetology, as L, the organization type. Is it LLC, sole proprietor? School mailing address, that's very simple. Physical address, uh, is there a barber school operating in this same space? If yes, provide a barber school license number. All these questions are just cut and dry. Anticipated date, when you plan on opening. The curriculum, you probably don't have a curriculum. We have that for you, all right? Most state boards, they're going to ask you for documents that you don't have. What Some state boards want a curriculum, some want lesson plans. Some want an enrollment agreement contract. Some want a school catalog. Some want a satisfactory academic progress report. Some want the refund calculation. Every state board is different on what they want. But whatever they want, we have. <clears throat> Send your completed application and requirements to TDLR. Okay, let's go on down. It tells you the required documents. For, we're doing Texas. So don't talk to somebody in another state because they're going to mislead you because we're talking about your state. We're talking about Texas today. How much is application fee? $500. If you talk to Karen in New York, application fee in New York is 5,000. Application fee in California is 5,000. Every state board is different. Some state boards is $200, some 300, some 500, as you see here, some 1,000. It's different, okay? Proof of ownership of the building. You may not own a building or a lease. So you got to show a lease if you don't own a building. A floor plan. 
All right, I'm gonna show you this a floor plan. All right, here's a floor plan. Basically, one of our students walked in a building where you see the stations, they put X's for stations, just little X's and chicken scratch. Um, the conference room, they just wrote that, the restroom. I need to show you all <clears throat> one of the chicken scratch. That's what I need to do. Show y'all one of these a chicken scratch. And then our team will lay it out perfect for you. So they didn't do that. We did that. Okay. So now let's go back to the application. Here's the application. All right. Uh, school curriculum approval. Two pages for each course to be offered. All right. We have that for you. I understand y'all don't have that. Uh, current state financial statement. If you need a CPA or somebody to do that, I can refer you to a CPA that does though. I am not a CPA. We're not CPAs. Certified public accountant? No, but we will refer you to one. All right. <clears throat> You're not a public uh, secondary school, so we can skip that. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. You're private. Inspection process. Once the school application requirements have been met. So once you submit your application, and all the requirements are there, and you paid your fees, okay, this is what they're gonna do. They're gonna come out, they're gonna inspect your school. You don't have to be scared. Everything is in the rules and regulations. It tells you everything that you need. If you just <clears throat> print it out, check it off, check it off, check it off, you don't have to worry about missing anything. Anything that's on the state board, rules and rigs, you want to follow that. If it's not on there, don't worry about it. They can't trick you or whatever. Now, this application, very simple. Look, put your name of school. It's, it's, it's that simple. Put your name of school. Vaughn, name of school, Jessica. It's real simple. It's a private, okay? Private post-secondary. That's something you probably wouldn't know. Organizational type, most of y'all are limited liability, LLC, some sole proprietor, whatever. Mailing address, that's real simple. <clears throat> so this application, look at it. There's nothing hard about this. If y'all got a question with the application, email the team. Now, down here, the days of operation. You're not gonna have a school license number yet because they ain't gave you one. Sunday, closed. I mean, look, let me show y'all how easy this is. Most of y'all gonna be closed. Look, Monday, a lot of y'all probably gonna be closed. That's simple. Tuesday, what I mean, you may be over from 9 a.m. to I don't know, 5 p.m. It's that simple. That's simple. Um, list the name or contact information of the owners. You just put your name. What's the name of the owner? Put your name right here. Whatever your name is, you, you just simply put it there. Okay, we'll just put, uh, we can put anybody's name. Vaughn, we'll put Vaughn Thurman right there. So you just type that in, that simple look, Vaughn. All right, ownership, 100% or whatever. If you're an LLC, you have an EIN, put that number here. If you're a sole proprietor, put your social. All this is self-explanatory. Very simple. Fill this out in 10 minutes. <clears throat> now, what, what, are, what are you gonna teach? A school can, and that's a great question. A school could be open seven days a week. You can be open two days a week, three days a week. You put your own hours of what you, what, what you want to be open. Yeah, you leave, you put NA, put NA on that, uh, Dion. Uh, let's see. Okay. As a barber, you leave sections. Okay. You leave blank if you are not in the same space as a barber. Section six. All right, so let's go to section six. Yeah, you'll put in eight. Where are we at? 
Is there a barber or school operating in the same place? If it is, yes. If it's not, you put no. All right. Uh, okay. So listen, Dion, you want to share that with them? If you want to, come on right here right now, Dion. Share that with them if you want. Y'all should be able to unmute yourself. And y'all can unmute anytime. We're, 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 this is an open workshop. I'll go ahead. I just won't turn on my camera. I just wanted to share that portion regarding um, that section six, <clears throat> because when um, when I opened up the school um, a couple years ago, I actually filled that portion in and I filled in the portion on page two with the same hours and uh, TDLR kicked it back because I wasn't uh, commingled or in the same space as a barber. So that's why I was making a point to say that if you're not in the same space as a barber in school, for number six right here, you actually put NA, you put no, and then you just put NA everywhere. NA, everywhere. Um, but you do right. have to go back on that second page and put in your hours, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And anything that y'all want to share, y'all just come in because we want to learn from everybody in here. Um, all right, so we'll keep going. So now, uh, anticipated opening date. This doesn't have to be the exact date. This is anticipated when you plan on opening. Um, then fill in the hours. We have some school owners that open three days a week, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, they go work at their shop. All right? Whatever you put in here, you want to stick to it. The curriculum. Uh, you just check these. If you're a barber, most of them going to do, you know, the barber. Uh, manicure and aesthetics. You don't have to teach everything on here. Some of y'all may teach a lot of stuff on here. Some of y'all may just teach one thing. You may just have a nail school. You may just have a barber school. You may just have a cosmetology school. Also, okay. real quick, Chin, I'm sorry. Yeah. On this yeah. section here on number eight, the very last option, instructor with one year experience or instructor for 750, those are no longer um, available. Uh, the state of Texas has currently done away with uh, the instructor and program. That's Crazy exactly as it is, right. but it's it's no longer there. So those would be two options that you could not fill out because they will not accept your package. And think about it. Texas, we have probably maybe, we have more students in, from Texas in our program than anywhere. When they pass that law, it's almost like the barber stylist nail techs in Texas just came out the woodworks. Because now, like she said, you don't have to have an instructor's license. You can be a barber, stylist, nail tech, and open your school and teach in it. Now, anybody can open a school, but in most states, you got to have a licensed instructor to actually teach your students. All right. But in Texas, you don't have to have an instructor's license to teach. You no, can no right. you, in Texas, you don't have to have your license to open the school because when I opened my school, I did not have my license. Um, but now anyone with a valid license can teach anybody, even if you go take your finish your practical and you walk out with your, you know, your approval that you pass tomorrow, you can go teach as crazy as that is. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, keep on the record because I'm sorry. everybody needs to to chime in, this is y'all's time to chime in and ask all questions and give your input. I also think sometime soon, Texas is gonna do away with needing a license for either wig or hair weaving. One of them is about to come off the books where you don't need a license. So if you're thinking about opening your school in Texas for one of those, that's coming off the books and you'll no longer need to be licensed. Okay. And there are a lot of states with natural hairstyling like years ago thank you so let's say let's say you're in a state where they don't allow you to they don't allow you you have to you have to have a certain amount of time before you can take your test to be an instructor if you wanted to appeal to the board is there a certain protocol or a certain way that you would go about doing it because my thinking is okay hey if texas is if texas says you don't have to be licensed for three years i'm in south carolina so if I say, hey, Texas is doing it this way, Florida is doing it this way, Georgia is doing it this way, possibly, I'm just using examples. And I want to appeal and say, well, why can't South Carolina do it this way? 
how would I go about appealing to my state board about it? You can, all of y'all can submit any appeal to your state board by sending that in. And then whether it's quarterly or monthly or every two, three, four, five months, whenever your state board meets, they will put you on a docket. Now, of course, we all know it's left up to the state board of what they're going to approve. Now, some things are out of the board's hands because we also know that they have legislation that passes the laws, okay? So some things out of the state board's hands because it hadn't passed through legislation. Now, you may have to go through legislation. It may, you may get it passed. You may not get it passed. So that's something that nobody can say yes or no. I would also say that if that's what you're choosing to do, I'm just reaching out on my paralegal background. You need to make sure that you establish a case to show why you have to establish a persuasive case. Why should this state change in comparison to the other? Because you know that they all operate very independently. Um, you also are going to need to have some sort of uh, substantiation to show why it's going to work for you. So that might be cases of, you know, within your state, of this didn't happen and if you would have allowed us to have it this would have been more beneficial to the state you've got to show that you've got to show that it's beneficial to the state to make the change that you're asking for sounds good thank you okay so now um well the way it works is you have to get a a, a, a senator you know to propose the bill so just like anything else you want done in politics, you have to put us, you have to have a, a senator and representative in your pocket. Or, you, uh, you know, or you got to put something in their pocket, <laughs> you know, and they will, have to, they will have to propose the bill, you know what I mean? So you got to make a relationship with, with, a, with, a, with a representative or a senator that can um, put that bill on the table, you know, and, and they push that bill. But you got to present it to them. You got to build a relationship with that senator and and give them a and give them the like like she was saying a reasonable you know cause to present that so they can put their argument up. And that's what we talk about with legislation. Sometimes the board can't do anything because it has to go through legislation. Now, um, and there have been cases where stuff has been in the legislature and. The barber, stylist, nail techs, whoever have have bombarded the capital, or whatever. And that's another thing. When they're doing this, just like the people when they're passing gun laws, abortion, and all of that, if you come out in droves supporting or not supporting, that can uh, help too. Sometimes, sometimes they'll pass these laws, and if you all are not aware of what's going on, it'll just pass through. So. That's something that y'all want to uh, keep in your mind. Um, every state board, their application, y'all can go through here. I'm not going to go through this step by step. I just want you all to be aware that the application is not as hard as a lot of people may think it is. Look at your state board. So what we're going to do after you've done this, even if you submit your application to the board and something's not right, they'll tell you. They'll, they'll kick it out and send you an email or whatever or something in the mail, depending on what state you're in, and tell you, well, you need to change this or change that, or this is not correct. Now, this checklist, all you have to do is go through the checklist step by step. Very simple, step by step by step. If you get an A-type personality um, inspector, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is go by the book. They, that, that's what they have to go by. So if they didn't approve you because of something you didn't have on here, that's your fault because everything is in black and white right here. Yeah, and I got a question. Go ahead. Uh, when, you, when you were saying you got to check whether it's going to be a sole proprietorship or a, a LLC or whatever, mm -hmm. um, what if I have an LLC? I mean, I'm, I have a sole proprietorship, but I, but I eventually going to switch it to an LLC. Uh, can I do? Can I go ahead and apply as, as a sole partnership now? And later, switch it to LLC, or do I? Well, how would that affect accreditation? Can I switch that, or do yeah, I need to go do it first? Well, 
before accreditation, it's better to do everything before accreditation. And the reason why, because anytime you're changing your uh, type of ownership, your name, your location, all of that dealing with accreditation, while you're going through that, you're going to have to pay a fee. There's an application now because the accreditation has uh, applications for change of name, change of ownership, change of location, change of anything. And there's a fee with that. But if you do that beforehand, you all don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to show you all when we get to the NACUS accreditation part, I'll show you all a lot of those applications so you all can be aware of where they're at and basically what they're saying. All right. And so maybe, real quick, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I want to add to that, that if you change your information that's different than your application, you're going to have to submit the change of name, change location, or resubmit your application. So that means that if you have students currently enrolled, you have to cease all um, training sessions until they come back in, approve your paperwork, and then come back out and re-inspect you. And that could, depending upon the state that you're in, it could take a long time. Texas is kind of on the slow tip. And I'm only sharing that because I made a change to my school name from two years ago, and I had to make sure that I didn't have any students and I couldn't enroll any students until they came out and reapproved, uh, reinspected me and approved all my paperwork. So like Chen is saying, when you start, you might want to yeah. just make sure you have everything together to help keep the time, the momentum going instead of slowing you down. Yeah, well, I'm going to change the name. I'm just going to change the uh you know, the business type from a sole proprietor to LLC. But uh, yeah, I might as well do that first anyway. All right. So we're going to go to the next step because I think this is pretty cut and dry for everybody.